the direct retainer. Now, once the direct retainer is attached to the cast partial denture framework, when I apply a vertical dislodging force, what you see is there is some amount of resistance. There is. So hello everyone, today we will be looking at the topic of uh, indirect retainers and uh, I understood that this was slightly difficult in the undergraduate level, so I have tried my best to declutter the topic for you. Now, before we can jump into the topic of indirect retainers, I have I wanted to make a few things clear and the first one is the difference between a cast partial denture and a acrylic partial or a treatment partial denture. What has been described in the books is cast partial denture that is what you see over here it has a metal framework an acrylic uh, part and a denture teeth whereas what you see over here is the treatment or the acrylic partial denture so what is described in the books is cast partial denture but what we follow and give to the patients on a regular basis is acrylic or treatment partial denture so after having understood what is the difference between a cast partial denture and an acrylic partial denture, let us try to understand the fundamentals, the three fundamental concepts which is retention, stability and support. So retention is defined as the ability of the uh, framework or the cast partial denture to resist forces that are directed in the vertical aspect that is when you try to dislodge it in the path of insertion the ability of this cast partial denture to resist that force is called as the retention the ability of this cast partial denture to resist horizontal forces horizontally horizontal displacement is called as stability and the ability of the cast partial denture to resist forces directed towards the tissue surface that is if there is a framework that is sitting over here and if a force is applied towards the tissue surface it is called as the ability to resist that is called as support okay, so now let us try to understand the uh, the principle of indirect retainer let us consider this pencil to be the cast partial lens framework so this is the cast partial denture and the background that you see is the tissue surface so now when i apply a vertical dislodging force what you see is the pencil or the cast partial denger is offering no resistance to the vertical dislodging force. That means the retention is absolutely nil. Okay. So to enhance the retention, what we do is we add the first component that is going to resist the vertical dislodgement force. As you can see at the bottom, that is going to act as the direct retainer. Now, once the direct retainer is attached to the cast partial denture framework, when I apply a vertical dislodging force, what you see is there is some amount of resistance. There is some amount of resistance to the vertical dislodging force. But what you see here is if this is the anterior portion, this anterior portion has started to rotate. That means the direct retainer that has been attached is acting as the fulcrum and the anterior portion of the cast partial denture framework has started to rotate. Now this rotation can cause undesirable and detrimental forces on the abutment and that has to be prevented. So that is what, that is where the indirect retainer comes into the picture. So what I have done is to prevent the lifting or the movement of the anterior portion, I have attached a indirect retainer that is going to prevent the rotation of the anterior portion. So now what you see here is when I am applying a vertical dislodging force, what you see is the pencil is not raising up and the anterior portion is also not rotating. So this is the principle of indirect retainer and this gives us the definition of indirect retainer which says that indirect retainer is a component of cast partial denture framework that is going to assist the direct retainer in preventing the component from vertical dislodgement forces through a lever action acting on the opposite side of the fulcrum. It, has, it is a huge definition but if we split it up and if we can understand this principle and go back and read the definition it will be easier to understand. Now let us try to dive deeper into the other concepts of indirect retainer. Now if you see this refractory cast, wax pattern has been adapted and we will be trying to understand what is a fulcrum line on this cast now. A fulcrum line is basically an imaginary line that is connecting the distal surface of the most posterior abutment. That means it is an imaginary line that is going to connect to the distal surface of the first premolar on this side and the second molar on this side. So if this is the fulcrum line, an uh, indirect retainer is always placed perpendicular and far away from the fulcrum line. That means if this is the perpendicular and it, it has to be placed far away anteriorly. 
So an indirect retainer will be something like this occlusal rest that is there on this premolar. Why it has to be placed far away is only if it is placed far away anteriorly, it is going to resist the anterior rotation as we saw in the principle of indirect retainer. So that is why uh, indirect retainer is placed perpendicular and far away anteriorly to the fulcrum line as possible. So now let us try to understand the different types of indirect retainer. Before we jump into understanding the different types, what we have to know is like any other component, be it a major connector or a direct retainer or an occlusal rest, indirect retainer does not necessarily have to be placed as a separate component. So a direct retainer or a major connector by itself can also act as an indirect retainer. That is why understanding the principle of indirect retainer is essential to know if a separate indirect retainer has been incorporated in the design or if any other component that is there is going to act as the indirect retainer. So coming to the first one or the most commonly used indirect retainer is a auxiliary occlusal rest. So what you see over here is a Kennedy's class 2 uh, classification and if this is the fulcrum line the indirect retainer has been placed perpendicular anterior and far away from the fulcrum line. So auxiliary occlusal rest is the most commonly used indirect retainer. Next moving on to the canine extensions if uh, this is again a Kennedy's class 2 classification and what has been done is a rest has been incorporated that is an auxiliary occlusal rest has been incorporated and since if this premolar is weak or it cannot uh, take the entire load a small extension a small uh, line or a preparation will be done on the canine so that is going to act as the canine extension and the similarly in the same way if a rest is not incorporated on the uh, premolar and if a rest is incorporated on the cingulum of the canine so that is going to be a canine rest indirect retainer so thus these are these three are the most commonly used one moving on to the less commonly used indirect retainers now this is a kennedy's class 1 classification on a mandible and the major connector that has been incorporated here which is the lingual plate or the continuous lingual plate is going to act as the indirect retainer so this is this is the fourth type of indirect retainer which is the lingual plate indirect retainer now coming to the next one which is the indirect retainer that is coming in the modification areas so this is a kennedy's class 2 mod 1 classification in this the fulcrum line is going to be somewhere like this and the direct retainer that has been incorporated in the modification area that is the direct retainer given on this premolar is going to act as the indirect retainer also. So in a modification area we have to keep in mind that there, there might or might not be a indirect separate indirect retainer but most commonly the direct retainer the class assembly that has been incorporated in the modification area is going to act as your indirect retainer also and the least commonly used indirect retainers are going to be the rugae support here the major connector is taking the support of a well established rugae and this rugae support is going to provide and function as a indirect retainer and the last and the most uh, least commonly used one is going to be the major connector itself acting as the indirect retainer. Here what you see is a anteroposterior palatal strap. Now this major connector is going to act as an indirect retainer. It is not very effective but this major connector is going to act as the indirect retainer in a Kennedy's class 1 classification on a maxilla. So these are the most commonly used and the different types of indirect retainers that are existing and described in the books. Now let us try to understand indirect retainers in two special situations. One is Kennedy's class 1 classification and second is Kennedy's class 4 classification. If you see a Kennedy's class 1, what is happening is this is the fulcrum line and ideally an indirect retainer should be placed perpendicular and anterior to the fulcrum line. That means an indirect retainer should rest on the lingual aspect of the incisors but since incisors are a weak tooth to take that much amount of load what we are doing is we are splitting the indirect retainers and giving it as auxiliary occlusal rest one side on the first premolar and other side on the first premolar again so what is happening is the indirect retainer in a kennedy's class one will not sit on the incisors but rather be split and divided into two indirect retainers each side on the first premolar so that is in a Kennedy's class 1 situation 
and now if you look at Kennedy's class 4, the fulcrum line is somewhere here and that means indirect retainer cannot be given anteriorly. There is no position for indirect retainers anteriorly. So, we are going to incorporate indirect retainers posteriorly and just like how we saw in a Kennedy's class 1, we will split the indirect retainers into two halves that has been incorporated in the most posterior abutment here being the molars. So here a direct retainer assembly, a direct retainer clasp assembly is going to provide the indirect retention that is going to be incorporated in a Kennedy's class 4. So these are two different situations that has to be kept in mind and indirect retainers are going to be split rather than being placed at a convenient position. So I hope this video was helpful in understanding the different types and the principle of indirect retainer. So that's it for this video. Thank you.